Hey folks, it's Tom, your frugal prepper. So we're going to be installing the balance shaft sprocket and chain. Sprocket here. Um, you want to put this back on in the direction it was before if you're reusing it. So mine, it was pretty easy to tell just from the size of this little clean spot here. This one against the balance shaft. And this is the exact size of the washer on the bolt. So that goes towards the bolt side. Uh, but basically we're going to have to put uh, the engine at top dead center on number one. Then we have to rotate the crankshaft 90 degrees. Um, and then we have to put in the special tool that holds the balance shaft assembly. And then we have to finger tighten the sprocket bolt with the chain on it. Then we have to put the tensioner on. And we have to push it snugly against the chain and tighten the top uh, nut thing that holds it then we have to loosen then we have to torque down the tensioner spro or ten torque down the sprocket bolt then we have to loosen the uh, tensioner and gap it uh, 0.040 inches and then torque down those bolts should be fun. I, I think it sounds a lot more complicated than it's actually going to be. But we'll see. All right. So the first thing here is just going to be get this right at top dead center on number one. It's pretty darn close right now. It's, it's almost there. Starting to fall. Okay, we're right at the top dead center there. So now I'm going to go ahead and rotate this engine exactly 90 degrees. I'm just going to use my torque angle gauge to do this. Let's see my 90 degree mark here. Let's see my zero degree mark. Went just a hair far. Okay. It's exactly 90 degrees. So now I'm going to go ahead and flip this engine back over. Um, you can see at 90 degrees, all the pistons here are dead even in the middle of the cylinder. Okay. Alright, so now we're going to install our balance shaft tool here. These tab, This tab on the tool has to go towards the top. So we got to turn these where the flat spot is on the top. And that holds our balance shafts in place so that they can't move. Alright, so our next step here is to go ahead and uh, install this sprocket in its original position. Oh, I'm going to kind of slip it up on the chain. Get it on here if I can. Hmm. Something like it's not happy. It's because there was a link down there, I think. But there we go. So now we're back here in our position. So now we're supposed to finger tighten in this bolt. Right here. Again, left handed thread. Okay, so now um, we have to put our tensioner in here and tighten it down 
tied up against the chain. I think that's just to make sure there's no slack in it before we tighten the bolt down. So here is our tensioner. It's got this kind of like counterweight thing here. We just kind of put that in there, put it snug up against this. Put this bolt in. And then I'm going to put this nut on here for right now, too. And then just put that, push that tight up against the chain. Okay, so everything on the Chilton instructions here is it tells you install the balance shaft chain guide, press the chain guide tightly against the chain, and tighten the, then tighten the chain tensioner bolt. But it shows in the picture putting the cover on. But you obviously can't put the cover on because you can't get to the sprocket bolt anymore to tighten that, which is the next step. So I think they're just reusing the same picture um, as before when really they probably should have come up with a new picture. So you're not going to put this cover right here on for this step if you're following the Chilton manual. Um, so basically it, what it wants us to do is tighten this... Uh, bolt here uh, I'm taking it all these bolts really to 115 inch pounds so we'll go ahead and do that okay so I'm set for uh, 115 inch pounds we'll go ahead and just make sure these are pushed up make sure the tension is pushed over and tighten that down like it says Although I think you could probably just snug it up for this process because you're going to redo this when you set the tension again. But anyway, we'll do what it says. So now we need to tighten this sprocket bolt to uh, 30 foot pounds. This is one of the few times that I get to take my torque wrench and go because it's a reverse threaded bolt. There we go. You can feel that bolt stretching. It's crazy. It's like, please don't snap off. <laughs> Must be a special bolt made of some kind of GM unobtainium. All right, so now I've got to get these measures measured. It says to use a brass feeler gauge. I don't have a brass feeler gauge. I'm not going to go order one. Uh, it says here a brass feeler gauge needs to be used to ensure correct measurements are obtained. If a steel gauge is used, the steel gauge will not bend to conform to the guide and will cause an incorrect measurement. So they need this gauge to bend to conform to the guide to get that .040 measurement. So what I'm going to do instead is take my little cheapy AutoZone feeler gauges and just bend them a little bit so that they will conform to the guide hopefully we'll see yeah I'm just gonna kinda pre-bend them a little just like that and uh, we're gonna get it as close as we can put it in there so I'm gonna go ahead and break these two bolts loose I think we can get it close enough close enough for Tom's garage work and now that can move so I'm just gonna go ahead and put my feeler gauges down in here like so it looks like it's conforming pretty darn well to me so I'm just gonna push that tight up against there and snug these up
Yeah, it's in there pretty darn good and tight. And I mean, I can move it up through here. It, it feels good to me. That's where it's supposed to be. So now we're going to take this bolt back off. So I'm going to make sure this one's good and snug. And then we got to loosen this one because it has to go on top of the cover. It should not move because the bottom bolt's still tightened up. So this is our plastic cover. It's on there like so. This bolt right here in. Hmm. Let's see if that's going to go. I don't want to force it. Yeah, it goes. That's good. Okay. So get this nut on. going to go ahead and torque these guys down to 115 inch pounds. Put this back. There we go. Oh no, that was my 3 eighths that I had flipped. Okay. We'll go ahead and... All right. So that bolt there, I had it snugged up pretty tight, but I did feel it move just a hair before it clicked, so I know I'm right on the money. Otherwise, I might need to back it off a little to make sure I hadn't already over-torqued it with this regular socket wrench. So, we're set. We'll go ahead and pull our tool off here. Uh, our tools back off we're all set I'm going to turn the engine over just to make sure everything seems good looks good alright folks so got that done um, and I guess the next thing will be to get the oil pan on here what I can do while I'm getting ready is there's the the front and rear main seal parts well I just I think actually just the rear front main seal is actually in the timing cover um, I don't think there's a reason I can't go ahead and, well no I can't put the timing cover on until I get the head back though so um, once we get the head back from the machine shop, we'll be ready to start working on the top end of this motor just a little bit. And uh, I'll get this rear main seal installed. I can do that. We can get the oil pan installed uh, if I get that back. And um, then we're waiting on some machine work for the head. And it'll be time to get the heads on and timing chains and all that. I'll talk to you all later. This is Tom, your frugal prepper.